Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we are doing the final assembly on the world's largest Newton's Cradle project. We have our cable from Car Lane, which we've got our spool set up with a screwdriver and a vise so we can pay it off. We've got a hook mounted on a workbench here and Mr. Kidwell has a vise down on that end for being able to make it adjustable. And we've set up right now with our maximum length. What we're doing is we're taking the cable and you got a thimble? No. You don't have a thimble? I didn't bring... How am I supposed to explain this stuff? How am I supposed to do this? I'm trying to be professional here, Paul. I need one thimble, that's all. I need one thimble. We got nothing. <laughs> all right, well, what we're doing, and you'll see as we go... Oh, here, this will show you. We've got the cable goes on this piece, which is called a thimble, and then we're putting the thimbles on the top. They go onto a dual-eye turnbuckle and then a quick link, which is kind of like a carabiner, but for you know, much more tedious applications. And then we put the ferrules on here, loop it through, and crimp it. And that is the top end of the cable assembly. So we've got the quick link, the turnbuckle, the thimble, the cable, and the ferrule. And this all has to be put together. These are made to a measured distance from there to there. Right now, we're trying it out at, what is it, 12.6? Uh, 12 inches. 12 inches. Or 12, 12 feet. 12 feet. Okay. Um, we're doing 12 foot apart, which is as long as we can do it and have enough cable to do the whole cradle out of one spool. We've got a thousand foot spool. Um, it, this may be too long, so we're making one at max length just to test. And Paul's crimping it now. So, yeah, that's, that's the basic process. And it's pretty boring and repetitive, but we'll time lapse a lot of this. So, yeah, we're going to rock out and build the world's largest Newton's Cradle. Are you excited, Paul? I'm excited. Are you? Now, how are you going to take that off of there? Good question. <laughs> Damn. We are you make five the, minutes in, and we've had our first impressive level screw up. No, it's not you impressive. You got to take the whole clamp off and reset everything. Yeah, that ain't gonna fly. I got to come up with a way that I can just slip it off. I'd drill a hole through there and put a bolt. That's what I'd do. I'd drill a hole through the bench, put a bolt on it. But that's me. Or you know, you can permanently destroy the nice hook. Yeah. You, you could do that if you want. Mm -hmm. Just ruin it. We just can't have nice things. No, we can't. And now your measurement's off. We're doing test purposes right now. Okay. You going to slide that other one down to tighten it? No, no, hang on, hang We're on. We're crimped. You can't tighten it. No, you undo the clamp oh. and slide it down so your length stays all right. All right, hook, put it on the hook. I'm on. Because see, now there's all kinds of there's slack in the system. Mr. Kidwell is giving, a, giving an excellent demonstration of entropy. Okay, you ready? Yep. Unhook that in. And we'll make another one. And while you're making the next one, I'm going to go file this quick link. Okay. Because on the... We need to file the quick links. This is the, the part that actually connects up at the top because the bracket that we got that it goes through is too narrow. Out of the way. Am, am I in your way? You're in the way. All right. So the little part here, not the threading, but the little collar around the top of the threading is too thick to fit through the mount on the cradle frame. So I have to file this off, which really isn't that big a deal. I mean, it only takes you know a minute or so, but there's a lot of pieces. <laughs> so I'm going to go file this. And uh, you can watch here. We'll do it. We'll try it on a bench grinder. All right. So back here in the corner, we have our bench grinder, and here is the quick links that we're using. Now, the at the top, there's the threading part here, and at the top of that, there's a shoulder that is just a hair too big to pass through the hooks at the top. So we're using a little bench grinder, and I just need to take. 
tiny bit of that off, just enough to pass through. Just like that. Cool. And there's one. Paul. Yeah. You're screwing up. Why? The bottoms, that end, yeah. needs to go through a bowling ball. That's what the, you're putting a quick link on the bottom as well as the top so you can undo them and... Okay. You got quick links on the top We don't need bottom. to do it that way. We can put them right to the There's balls. no way we're going to do this and have it measured on a bowling ball. No. You take all my fun away. Yes, I do. I try. Really, really <laughs> hard. You're so mean to me. I am nothing but love and sunshine to you. What kind of clamp is that, Mr. Kidwell? You told me. I forget. It's an Atlas clamp. That's right. As opposed to a whose clamp? Somebody else. You're a very messy man. I try to be. Okay. All right, so we've got two sets. We've got two sets. And you put the beaner on the wrong side. The, okay, untrimmed beaners go on this end. Trimmed beaners go on this end. You can yes. look at the thing. This one's There's trimmed. a trimmed beaner, so yeah, that'll go trimmed. there. This one's trimmed, this so one's that'll go there. Okay. So we've got one our more first set. Yes. Okay, you need another beaner. I need another Have beaner. beaner. Have a beaner. Okay. All right, so we've got our first test set. Now, these are the absolute maximum length. Yes. Okay. So, so the ball yeah. should be fairly low. We'll figure out where we want it and adjust accordingly. All right. Let's go hang it. Let's go hang it. Cool. Grab my cable. Oh, and they're tight. <laughs> well, the one that's right against the end. Yeah, is... I know. I can, I can just go with this for now. That felt good. Thank you. You probably should get some sort of gauge to just use for how far out you want. Didn't the, I tell uh, you to tighten your thing down all the way? Tighten what thing down? The turnbuckle. Way? No, you said center it. I don't know where you got the other one. You're the one that did the other one. You may hang the ball. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> Turnbuckles added the length. Yeah. But this That's is the maximum. Kind of the Where are we at? Below the rail. Below the rail, okay. Well, you wanted it low. How low is low? That is a, a bit too low. I would think. Wow. Now, I'm going to go get some tools. About there, I think. Paul, these are at 12, right? Those are at about 12.6. That's the maximum. 12.6? I think if we do 10, we'll be just about perfect. All right. Well, hold on a sec. Oh, we could do the math to figure out like the perfect thing, but I mean, there is no There's exact perfect subjective spot. Subjective as to where yeah. you, how far off the floor you want. Yeah. It's an A. You got a logo. 
Você boca a mão. Você tem alguém assim? Vamos, rapaz. Vamos sim. It is now after dinner break, and Mr. Kidwell has quite the groove here for cable assembly. Yes, I do. So show him what you got. All right. We're using Carlane CL3 cable, which is rather heavier than what I'm accustomed to using. It's a stainless version, too. It's a stainless version. It is. Version. I got the good stuff. That is a Carlane ferrule. A ferrule is like the thing that holds the eraser on the end of your pencil. Well. This is a CL5 ferrule, which is supposed to be for the CL3 cable. It's the long ferrule, so I get to double crimp it. Uh, we ran into a little bit of an issue because you can't pass the wire through the ferrule twice easily, so I kind of pre-squish it to make it a bit of an oval rather than round. I'm going to put a loop down on the cable so we can use the minimum length wire. We're not wasting any from one to the next. That'll be the bowling ball end in a minute. Another ferrule for the top. And we have turnbuckles with quick connects up here. We're using a thimble to hold the uh, loop of the wire consistent. Mr. Kidwell has had about six shots of espresso, so he's kind of twitchy. Just a little. <laughs> there we go. However, he has been able to make about a thousand of these things in the past two hours. <laughs> okay, so I have just a little bit of the wire coming through here. And I'm going to hold that tight and then put two crimps in our ferrule. There is one. And then there's two. 
So there's the top end of our wire right there. Now, hang on, let's, let's show this for the, those following at home. We've got our turnbuckle here, which allows us to lengthen the assembly, and we're setting these to zero all the way in and then snugging them. So this is the turnbuckle with two eye bolts. We have the thimble here, which is the, the metal liner that keeps this from crimping down. And a, a big purpose of the thimble is, you can see we crimp them really tight at the thimble. And what this does is makes this a consistent distance. Because without that, it'll chafe there. Uh, the, the plastic liner of the cable will want to chafe off. And it would also make this into a bit of a spring where the springiness of the cable would pull it up and the weight of the bowling ball would pull it down. So we'd end up with an inconsistent dimension here. On the other end, we have a quick link, which is pretty much like a, a single link of chain with a screw fitting here. It's kind of like a carabiner, but not. So that's the top end we've got. And that's off to the cable. And now we do the fun with tension. Yes. Uh, we have a clamp down here with a carabiner on it to hold the one end of the cable. And, and at this end, we have a loop with a ferrule already prefed. Yep, that's what I had set up a moment ago. And what I'm going to do is I have a hook here on the bench. And I'm going to give... And then I take the free end and loop that through here. You'll notice our custom harness safety rig. So people can see what's going on there. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Now, Duck is going to hold some tension for me. Go ahead. And I'm going to slide the ferrule up to the thimble. And there's one crimp. Pull it off. And there's my second crimp. Ah. Cut it off so there's no wasted piece of wire there. Add another quick connect for the bowling ball end. And close it so it don't fall off, and okay. there you go. And, and now I'm on to another wire. I send this one down like this, and then we hand it off to the magnificent Andy, who has come in as volunteering. Come here, you gotta, get, you gotta say hi. You're gonna be famous. Right? Come here, okay. say, say hi to the world. They know you. you you guys know Andy from the, uh, what, what was the big video you in? You did the... Uh, I took apart the robot. Yeah, we took apart Project Kevin. So he was here for the Kevin autopsy, and this is Andy's kid brother, I'm guessing? Yes. Okay, who does not have a geek group nickname yet? I, he kind of does, but I'm not going to say that on camera because you'll get stuck with it forever. So you have to earn it. That's how geek group nicknames work, is you, okay. you stick around long enough and you, you just, you earn it. So, which you don't want to know about his, but yeah. Your, your actual official geek group nickname is, is uh, Santa Paul, That's as right. I understand it. Yes. 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 So, and, and we'll cover the Santa Paul story. We'll talk about oh, it. Oh, yes. All right. Okay. All right, you two get that hung, and uh, we'll get back with those guys in a second. They're, they're doing a lot of ladder work, so we'll be over there and show the assembly of the cradle. Um, but first, we're going to tell the Santa Paul story. Tell the Santa Paul So tell them the Santa Paul story. Let's see. 2001, was it? Right around there, yeah. 2001. It was 2001. a 2001 Tesla-thon. <laughs> you were a day late. <laughs> and I was a day late to the Tesla-thon. We've already told this story at least once. I don't know if we've ever done it on camera. I think so. Yeah. Anyhow, um, I was coming for the Tesla-thon. I also had a truckload of stuff to donate. Um, my wife had wanted me to clean out the basement. <laughs> so I took probably $30,000 worth of gear and brought it over so I could get the tax deduction, which worked fairly well, but uh, played around, not yet, played around at the Tesla-thon, met Matt, among other people, and who else who was Who is also there? now a board member of the Geek Group. Yes, uh, it was Mark, and no, there was a bunch There's of people, of people there. there. Anyhow. That kind of got me hooked into coming back periodically, and every time I'd show up, I'd have a truck full of stuff. All kinds of things. Well, you're kind of famous for being a bit of a scrounger and a pack rat. Yes, so. I generally keep everything. And I mean everything. It's like I'm talking and I have to think before I crimp to make sure I'm not doing this wrong. I got one. You suck. 
What do you mean I suck? I'm nothing but nice to you. See, I, I do it. I did I put oh, a you thimble put on the it. Thimble on. Did the whole thing. Well, good. I did got the one, whole thing. Thank you. I got one more with you, the thimble already. You don't care. So here, go hook that down. No, I, I did my part. I. Well, that I didn't pull this one down far enough. You up down? You let me. <laughs> You're gonna rip my finger off doing that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna thimble these. So going with the story. Well, that's kind of it, really. Then we got to the point where you were asking for things, and I was finding them. Yes, you that proved was... yourself to be the master scrounger. Yes. So that's problematical, though. That was some things I could get, some things I couldn't. Tension. I'm I'm getting thimbles. Just I need, fun than I, this need part. I need tension. All right, more. you ready? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, pulling it off. Clear. Ah. Anyhow, that's the Santa Paul story. After the, about the third or fourth time, you started calling me Santa Paul, because I was always bringing presents. And you weighed 400 pounds. <laughs> Well, 368, actually. It was the beard that did it. It was though. the beard. That's right. I, I had beard. Often. Yeah, you got to not do that anymore. Often. Why not? Because it's creepy. What do you mean it's creepy? It's, it's creepy. Well, I used to have the double chin to hide. Now I got the waffle to hide. We, I'm telling you, we can fix that. No, thank I you. I can take that I'll right off. I'll have somebody take care of that for me. I got, I got an angle grinder. Yeah, I'll right. I'll fix that right off. No, I think not. You got a hair on your ass, you won't let me go at that with a scalpel and an angle grinder. It's not that I don't trust you, it's done? just that I don't trust you. You may not have a hair on the ass, hair on the ass because that, but it does have a few brain cells. Now, these quick connects that are on these turnbuckles are all the angle ground turn Yeah, I'm, I'm turn grabbing the angle ground. That's I, got, I got more angle ground. No, those are not angle ground. You're not putting those on. That one's angle ground. I know, because they're off of here. These are the ones I grabbed for the bowling ball end. You're not putting those I on. I pulled it out of there, and it's got angle ground on it. I just pulled it out of the box, and it's ground. I'll pull another one out of the box. This one isn't ground. No, OK. Put. Put those on those. Leave those alone. Okay. No more beard. No Freaks more beard. Out. Why did you? Freaks me out. <laughs> Here, take a walk. I go walking after midnight. I go out walking, and there's no light. What makes me think you forgot the lyrics? Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> I had the uh, um, no love today stuck in my head all morning. Wandering around a house singing no. that. Beat C is for cookie. <laughs> I had C is for cookie, the <laughs> Ethel Merman version of it going through I can't my even head. imagine that. Well, the, the Muppets. C is for cookie. It's good enough for me. I did, oh, I no, it was Ethel more Merman. melodious. I hate it, but, Ethel Merman. But, no, of Ethel course, Merman. you know I'm not 300 years old like you are. I I'm not fond of her either. I'm just saying that's the version that's going through my head. I can't even picture that. I, the only like Dude. Sesame Street artist music I remember is when Stevie Wonder went on Steph Sesame Street. Well, it's, the, the Muppet Show was on in the evening, and it was all vaudeville acts and stuff like that. Yeah, you know I was like four, right? Well, they had some, everybody, everybody made an appearance on the Muppet Show. I oh, mean, yeah. Okay, tension? Here yep. we go. Well, Ethel Merman made an appearance, and naturally she had to sing, so they gave her C is for Cookie to deal with. Okay. I 
mean, that's, I, I kind of remember that stuff, but I was little, man. I mean, that's, that's, I, okay, to give you an idea of how much I remember that, I remember the, the guy with the hat down to here. Um, Dr. Teeth. No, no, not, it's not a Muppet guy. Um, oh. It was the, the, it was like a vaudeville thing. It was like a, a, a talent show, but it was like a pass-fail thing. And they had a... The gong show! Yeah! Yeah, I know with that. With the guy with the hat? Yeah. Yeah, that's all I remember is the guy with the hat. Well, okay. the gong show is uh, American Idol. It's the exact same show, exact same format. They got three judges. The only thing Idol doesn't have is the gong. And for God's sakes, they definitely need a gong. You know, see, there you go. They, they, need, they need to make American Idol into the gong show. Like, oh, man. Wow. If, they, if they put Simon in a hat, I'd watch it. Okay, that's, oh, that's no, total lie. I still wa wouldn't watch it. Si Simon's worth watching just because of how mean he can be. I'm me. You I have be, no impetus to watch the show. No, no, no. You could, <laughs> you could, <laughs> watching Simon just rip somebody to shreds is boy. I'm like, me. Yeah. <laughs> Why so would you, I want to watch this show? Because you could appreciate what he's doing because you do this. I can watch thing. somebody be me with a British accent? Yep. Okay, where'd, where'd, where'd the guys go? There they are. You got that one done? Yeah, you want to? Yeah, I'll send it. Okay. How many more? How many more before you can start doing stuff over there? One more. We have half of both sides. Excellent. Awesome. Yay! Uh, if you got Yay! if you got half of one side, you can start spacing. Andy. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. So, what is your system here? Well, the original idea is slightly different than what the system actually is. Okay. Are you thinking from this end that way? No. Where did you start? The middle. The very middle. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Put that one in the very middle and then you just measure from there. Okay. Now, the idea was to put each of these into the slot. Yeah. It'll be easy to line up. Yeah. Unfortunately, these cross we pieces... We didn't account for the bars. Right. They get in the way. So okay. I'm zip tying it just below and then I'm lining it up by... Mostly by sight. Okay. Which should be plenty Which should close be, enough for what we're doing. Yeah. All right. Are you online now? Hmm? Are you in position yet? Um, yeah, looks like. It's not as stable this way as if it was hooked, but... Okay. Well, then I can but slide this up. You got the wrench? I do. Where is the wrench? In my hand. Oh. Wow. Tightening things. Fat lot of good it does me there, doesn't it? So in theory, this should be accurate enough so that we don't have to do any more adjusting on this. That'd be nice. Now when you tighten these, use the short end in and then give it like about an eighth of a turn after tight from the other end. Okay. The, the long end is considered like finger tight. Okay, doing it like that. Okay. And then you do this and give it like another oomph. About 45 degrees is usually enough. Get that one here? Yeah. That's straight, that's straight. First three on this side of the bar are done, but that's all the farther I can reach. Did you do the other side at all yet? Hmm? Have you done the other side at all yet? No. Okay. 
Other side has not been done at all. There. All right. Now all right. you need to move the ladder. Now we got to move the ladder. Yeah. I'm going to let you rock out, sir. All right. And I'm going to go and hold tension for Mr. Kidwell some more. Now I'll move the ladder first. Cut that other one. I don't want to leave these here. They'll fall on my head like the tray of parts did. That was probably too far. Huh? No, those at the, there's three at the very end that aren't spaced. And now I go back. Yeah, I just had to cut that one. But I can't, I don't have arms quite that long. And then I'm going to have to climb up this side of the ladder or something. Or turn it around, which I don't really want to do. I don't want to turn it around. I mean, I could. It's probably the proper way. Okay, now I should be able to slide you over. Zip tie. Thank you, sir. That's a long way over this side. Now I should be able to cut this one. Oh, that was the serrated part. That's why I didn't cut. Okay. Stay. Dang it. Okay, that's, I don't know what to do about that one. John, how do I fix that? <laughs> no, no, that might work, right there. That might work. Yeah, well, I don't have to go all the way because this thing's too far. So we're going to try this. Every time I slide this over, it gets more interesting. So John, does it look right? Good enough. This can go, I don't know. I'll just hang on to it. Get over here, this might fall. Scratch that, it will fall. Wait, if I cut this one, okay, that just makes it harder. I can climb up this side. Or that. Not good enough then. Let's move the ladder. Right in front of the camera. Oh, whoops. That was my fault. There we go. <laughs> Wave at the camera. I still need four more of those. Yeah, I do. I like this. 
Like what? Bringing people together, working on an epic project, building something that'll be famous. It's not bad work if you can get it. <laughs>